Okay, let's talk about how we figure out the potential of a fully balanced equation when it has the reduction and oxidation components present. We're first going to look at the simple case, the regular case, and for this example, I'm going to um, use manganese and iron to depict the problem at hand. So let's say that we have um, manganese uh, in the form of permanganate and I have iron in the form of iron 2 plus those two species do not overlap with each other so they are going to react the moment I mix them together now looking at the possibilities here man permanganate has to go down so one possibility will be for it to go to manganese 4 oxide or to go all the way to manganese 2 plus both of those species will overlap with iron 3 plus which is uh, one of the products that we could get for iron. So I will have to maybe tell you where you're stopping if I'm asking you to predict the products. But right here, let's say that we only go down to manganese 4 oxide and we take the iron 2 plus to iron 3 plus. Now this would happen, you would stop a manganese 4 oxide if and only if um, you had a lot more iron 2 plus than you did per manganate. Okay? So in essence, your permanganate kind of becomes your limiting reagent. But let's take a look at this process. Now, specifically, what's happening here is that you're going from permanganate down to the next species, the, the species that is reduced next on the diagram. And for iron, you're going up to the species that is oxidized next in the diagram. So there's only one step per each. So what happens is that in the event of going from permanganate to manganese 4 oxide, the value of the potential is 1.7. Uh, going from iron 3 plus to iron 2 plus, the value of the potential is 0.77. Okay, and by the way, the balance reactions for each one of those boundaries, the balance half reactions are the ones that I'm showing right here. You have your permanganate plus 4 protons plus 3 electrons going to manganese 4 oxide plus 2 waters. And down here you have your iron 3 plus going to iron 2 plus. Notice that they are balanced both as reductions. But when you look at this thing, the only thing that's actually going down in the diagram is the manganese. The iron is actually going up in the diagram. Okay? So what that means is that we're not actually dealing with iron 3 plus going to iron 2 plus. We're doing the opposite. And so we need to reverse the equation right here. Oh, and also, uh, we need to balance the number of electrons. Notice that for the permanganate reaction, we have three electrons being used. For the iron reaction, there's only one electron, so we need to multiply that entire equation by 3. But, unlike what we did for delta H's and delta G's and the thermodynamic values, multiplying an equation does not affect the value of the potential because, once again, the potential is the ratio of energy per charge. And as you do change the energy, you also proportionally change the charge so the ratio ends up being always the same no matter how much amount of material you have or how little amount of material you have so the value of the reduction potential will remain 0.77 however because iron is actually starting at iron 2 plus and we're going to iron 3 plus we need to reverse the equation uh, the reactant is not iron 3 plus it is a product so we're going to reverse the equation but when you do reverse the equation i want you to pay attention to what happens here the reduction, now it's an oxidation, and more importantly, the value of the potential is now the negative of what it used to be. So whatever the value of that reduction is, if you have to turn it into an oxidation, all you have to do is change the sign. And the moment that you have them as one of them reduction, the other one as oxidation, what you do is you add up the reactions together, the electrons cancel out, you have your overall reaction right here, and just the same way, you add up the reduction potential with the oxidation potential, which in this case means that the potential of that entire redox reaction is equal to 0.93 volts. All right, so that's the simple case. That's when you're going up one step and down one step. But it could be the case that you actually go through multiple steps, in which case you do this consecutively. Let me show you an example. So we stopped in the previous example at manganese 4 oxide, but you could just as easily go all the way down to manganese 2 plus um, to, um, you know, oxidize your iron, right? So here you have even less permanganate than we did before. So um, to get all of the iron 2 plus to turn into iron 3 plus, the permanganate is going to have to give up 
even more electrons than it did before, so it's going to be, re you know, uh, reduced. Um, it's not giving up electrons, by the way, it's accepting electrons. It's going to have to be reduced even further just to get the, all of that iron to turn into iron 3+. All right, now, aside from that technicality, we have one issue. And the issue is that when you write the equation, you want to go from permanganate directly to manganese 2+. Plus. But the diagram has to go through two steps. So the question becomes, well, how do you combine that? And more specifically, what do you do about the value of the potentials? How do you get the potential for permanganate going directly into manganese 2+. Plus? And that's what we're going to address. Okay, and notice that here, yes, we have those two equations, but we're going to have to maneuver this a little bit better. All right, so here we go. If you adapt these equations together, right, the manganese 4 oxide is going to cancel out. You're going to end up with uh, 5 electrons overall, your 8 protons, 4 waters on the right side, and you want manganese 2+. plus. All right. So let's concentrate first on, on the permanganate, which is the hardest part, right? The iron... You're only going from iron 2 to 3 plus, so that's just literally the negative 0.77 for the oxidation. For, for the reductions here, we have an issue, right? We have the 1.70 volts for the first reduction and 1.23 for the second one that takes you to the final product. So what you do is you pay attention to the number of electrons in the balance have redox reactions. And what we're going to basically do is calibrate and average out how much voltage we're getting per electron in each one of these equations. Since the total number of electrons in the entire process going from permanganate to manganese 2 is a total of 5 electrons, what you need to do is multiply the corresponding potential by the number of electrons in the equation divided by the total, the total being 5. So for the first one, we multiply the potential by 3 fifths. For the second one, which only has two electrons, we multiply the potential by two fifths. And this basically kind of calibrates the potential per electron. And so what happens here is that you have new values for the potentials, but once you do that calibration, you could actually add them together to give you the overall process. So you're now dealing with 1.51 volts for the reduction of permanganate going directly to manganese 2 plus. And so you could use that as your reduction value the iron, which needs to be oxidized, all you have to do is change, you know, change the order. Um, also multiply by the correct number of electrons. You have five for the reduction, so you need to have five electrons for the oxidation. Swap it so that you have iron 3 plus on the product, as you should, and iron 2 plus in the reactant, as you should. And that means that you have to change the sign of your oxidation. So altogether, this process has the following overall balanced equation and the following cell for the potential, 0.74, right? So 1.51 minus 0.77 gives you 0.74. And to kind of sum up what we've done right here, if you apply the following changes to the equation, this is how you're going to change the potential itself. If you multiply the equation by constant, you do not do anything to the potential. You keep it as is. If you reverse the equation to come up with an oxidation, then you change the sign of E. If you add reductions and oxidation equations together, then you add the potential of the reduction with the potential of the oxidation to come up with a new potential for the entire reaction. If you have multiple reduction events or consecutive events, then you're gonna have to average the reduction potential. And also, if you do have multiple oxidation steps to go from the original species to the final one, then you're gonna have to average out the potential of the oxidation before you add them together to give you the potential of the whole cell. So it's a little bit different than what we've seen for the delta G's, delta H's, delta S's, and the equilibrium constants. But in some ways, it's actually easier. All right, so in the next uh, video, we're going to start talking about electrochemical cells, which takes us into the topic of batteries. So see you then.